Yeah. What's going on to all the people out here watching our Master Boxing Land? That's who I call it because I love my page and I love my fans. The objective today is to capture you guys in the essence of sparring. And as you know, as you watch our guys get into the ring, for as long as you guys been watching, you've seen us get into the ring and do specific training drills. But those things were led or preceded by something that gave us the ability to really perform in the ring at a much higher level than the typical average everyday fighter. What are those things? Well, today I made sure that I wanted you guys to truly have what we call the essence of what it is, the recipe, the remedy. So we're going to go into a breakdown of each day, how do you become progressive in the art of sparring? because it's a science. So we did a video last year, early last year, which was titled The Art of Sparring, which gave everybody insight to what it is that it takes to be in the ring and spar, and how do you transition from your floor work where you're shadow boxing, defense, footwork, keeping your head off the line, working your bag, how does that transfer into the ring? All right, so what we did is break a scale into how does this look from day-to-day -day process? So this is when anything in, that you learn in life, first you lay down the foundation, which was the video. And then you lay down all of the toppings that go up on it that really make it significant. So when I did that, I realized there were people like, but what do I do on Monday? And in my mind, it was th I was thinking, okay, well, maybe follow the download. Okay, that's still not day by day. What do you do on Tuesday? What do you do on Wednesday? That gave me initiative to help even further because, as you know, we're getting ready to start our certification training to teach guys how to actually become elite coaches with all the right criteria. So it made sense that I buddied that up with the guides to each one of our downloads. So the, the artist barn download, now we'll have this. So we're gonna go through it. How do you improve your in the ring performance? This is what all of you guys are looking to do. And all of you guys are fighters and the coaches who exactly who I'm speaking to. What you need is to make sure, and this thing is like 30 pages. Um, that you have the right process. So if you have anything that you like to drop down, chime in and feel free to chime in. But we're gonna go step by step. Tuesday, we'll do Tuesday. Today is Monday. This is how we do a breakdown and this is exactly what's in the guide and that the people are actually having now and that is totally making the difference when you walk into the gym. So Monday, in the science of the art of sparring, it might look reverse to you up here look like I can write in Chinese, but trust me, I am not that versed. It's just that the camera is flipped. So, so I can see what's in the, it's in the video. So Monday, we do start off with our footwork. So we have our drills, and for those who have not had the opportunity to see that walking the floor, download, just type in walking the floor, master boxing, and it'll pop up in your Facebook feed or either on YouTube and you'll see all of the different levels of floor and footwork that there are. And that download is crazy. Um, I put all of the necessary ring generalship, all the different layers of pivots and stuff in there. So first we get our footwork. So we walk the floor, we do our drills, walk in the floor. You see it every day. We always never, we never avoid or abort our footwork drills. So. Preparation, it takes about 90 seconds to walk, to walk the floor down and back. We have about 30 yards from point A to point B. So we walk it in tiers. Tier one, we do what we call a walkthrough page. So we just kind of get the schematics of the walk. Tier two, we go at our average speed. So everybody's kind of on the same level, pop, pop, if you can see my feet, you know they're pretty nice with that work. Tier three is hot sauce. This is where your confidence is good. You have exactly what it is that we're doing 
down and you're putting your little spin on it. And tier four is fight mode. All of these things are broken down as a necessity because fighters skip from just getting it. <clears throat> I've seen it many times. They, they're just getting it and then they get into the ring. They don't have it down and they get in out. They come out the ring like, why didn't that work? Well, it did not work because you do not have it ingrained into your muscle memory yet. And when you get hit, like Mike Tyson said best, or Costia Amato, everybody has a plan until you get hit. And when you get hit and rock and you cannot reach back and pull what's necessary for you to do, the reason why that is, is because it's not in there yet. When you were a kid, you got on the bicycle, but it had training wheels on it. <laughs> you couldn't do it for one day and get out there and then start riding the bike because it wasn't in here yet. There are a whole lot of uh, neurons that have to connect. And this is the same thing that transfers into the ring. If you don't have it on a bicycle, you fall. If you don't have it in the ring, you get cracked. So we want to make sure you got it. So your footwork drills are a necessity. The tiers in which you do them are a necessity. Next, box in all four directions. Once you finish your walk in the floor, your objective is learn how to box going lateral. And you've seen me do it in the ring. If you haven't, if you're new to my page, you go, well, excuse me, new to our page. You go down the timeline for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and you'll see different variations of being inside of the ring. We make sure we minimize more ring work now. You can go back to like October or last year, November, December. We made sure we start showing more of the specific drills. Lateral, you have to be able to do that laterally, forward, and everybody, I, I can go in any gym in America, including yours. And when I see guys box, the first thing I see is they're always going forward. But you got to learn how to go backwards. Set guys up. You got to learn how to set traps. Now we just finished doing that. Two weeks of just that. Right here. Go down and watch how we bring you into the fold of what we're doing. And then we show you how to set guys up. When they're walking into your form, you know what's about to happen, but they don't. You know, you slide out. You catch. Boom. You walk them into your uppercuts, whop, whop, five threes, four three twos, four twos, four sixes. You can just break them down systematically. Next thing, you walk right here and you go to your, so you've covered all four directions. Next is your circling. And what does that entail? Those are the variations inside of that Ali circuit that we do. The Ali circuit is the back pedals, the side steps, and the circle. So in your shadow box sequences, after doing your walk in the floor, you want to execute your Ali's, forward skips, laterals, back pedals, and there are six tiers of back pedal, making six different styles. Now, your float like a butterfly. All of these things really entail all of the just natural sequences that we promote inside of our footwork drills. And yes, that's also in the Walk in the Floor series. That's um, Masterful Footwork 1. Logistics. After you finish your circling, now take this. This really gets you to the next point. That boxing off the ropes as you're doing your shadow boxing. And I must break down that you do five rounds that are necessary before you start your partner drills because then you have all the necessary algorithms down, you're feeling good. With that being said, that really makes your sparring that much more inept. You're inept to have much more solid sparring. So you do these drills off the ropes, showing you how to move laterally Put that back on the ropes and see how, how it feels to you. Are you comfortable on the ropes? Are you comfortable off the ropes? I do not suggest you box on the ropes, but you do have to feel what it feels like because you might run into another pugilist who's naturally 
great at pressing you or positioning you, and you could trip. If you don't have great footwork, it's really possible. Next, you're gonna go to your logistics of punching. Everybody can throw a punch when you go into a boxing gym. That's one thing. But how many variations of those punches do you have? Can you punch, can you put them together? In this era, this age, you see every fighter, they punch like this. You see this. You never see these rhythms in a match. You might see a guy on a double limb bag or mitts, but you never see them boxing that way. You can see these coaches working with the fighters and they're giving them that variation of high volume punches. But in the ring, the guy's like this. One punch, maybe two. You never see a combination puncher. Like the Ray Robinson, he take you four to the body. Come up top, pop, pop. The same variation up top. So four, six, eight punches in combination. We have a specific drill. And these are the punch fluidity drills. And then, don't get so caught up in just those. Next, you so focus on how to sit down. <clears throat> Step. <clears throat> On the punch, hit them to the sternum, to the temple, to the jaw. Break them down with power, profound techniques that we teach you, making sure that you don't miss these because we want you to have power. We just don't want you to think that that's all it is. When you start to go up levels, man, you're going to meet guys that's good. They're going to be as good as you or better. And whenever you are versed and you're limited, you're going to be in trouble if that's all you got. So you got to have the entire package. So now, timing. How do you time a guy? One thing you want to be able to have is this pace him and keep him at your bay. And then, if he jabs, know how to counter him. Timing. So we work on that as an entire round. On to part two. So that was D. Logistics of punching, fluidity, power, and timing. These are the key components for those who have just joined on how to become masterful in the art of sparring. This one, partner drills. Now it's time to see what you got. You've gotten the rhythms, your feet work, your footwork is on tack. Now you're gonna get in there with your partner. You're gonna be on the outside of the ring in what we call the box, where we first start maximizing the use of the box to improve the Philly shell because it's such a, um, it gives you such a defensive prowess and counterpunch skill set. But we wanted to make it really more impactful, so we put pressure on the guys who were doing this. And this is where we separate the boys from the men, meaning the guys who are really not good at it. You can't pretend like you're good at it because when real punches start coming, we're in a six by eight in that box. And you can't go outside of it. So when the punches start coming, they coming for real. Boom, boom. Um, your objective from that point is make a decision. Do I need a lot more work? Or am I really versed in becoming someone who's really, really great at delivering the Philly shell? Now, Every style comes in spots, scenarios. If a guy's throwing a flurry, if you really get yourself um, tucked into your defensive shell, like the greats of old, like the Archie Moores, and I like the white Muhammad Kawi, the Camden Buzzsaw, Evander Holyfield. He still took a lot, but boy, he blocked and countered a lot. So if you get into the position where those guys, James Lights out, Tony, we always mention James. James, there's no day that James' name's not mentioned in the days of social media because his, his defense, like I said, he was the closest to the great Archie Moore that I've ever seen. So when you look at this, these things are so important, but I should only lose the, use the Philly shell probably 10% of the match or 20% of the match. Or if you're someone like Floyd, you can use it more. But, you know, there are different la layers to Mayweather's offense and defense. So 
people get it twisted. He uses a lot. He uses high guard. He uses sway back. He does a lot of different things. They only can remember him for the Philly Shell. But trust me, there are a lot of guys that maxed it. They maximize the use of the Philly Shell. Next, once you get in there, we only run those drills for 90 seconds, one minute to 90 seconds. If you really, really, really about that life, you can go for two minutes. But see, you don't understand. Our most conditioned athletes, once they do one minute inside of that thing, that drill, it's enough because it's cut. those punches are coming at you. You're deep, pop, 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 pop. You're, you're releasing so much. Your testosterone levels are jacked up. Your oxygen levels are zapped away. That's 60 seconds to 90 seconds. You can ask my guys. It's real, but it allows you to transfer this stuff into the ring. But if you come up short with those runs, we run. We do our 12 peaks program. So if you are looking to improve your oxygen levels, just reach out like I know you're going to do the messenger in master boxing and ask about how do you really mix up your training and not do too much one thing and too much of the other thing. My athletes will tell you, we don't just run. Coach shows us variations of how to get your VO2 max up to par. So with that being said, because if you do that drill, your partner drill inside of the box, you got four rounds minimum per drill. You're gonna box that distance first. That distance, the one, two, threes, that's why pop, pop. You're gonna maximize how to get that. And you can look and see how I throw that three. That's a different three than coming in here with more of a check left hook. Why? Because this is a positioning hook, boom. That hook right there, position, see? Yeah, when you start training and fighting, at the amateur level, it's one thing. It's another thing when you be coming and getting into the pro levels and the pro rankings. It's another thing when you start to fight against ranked fighters, top 10, top 20, number one. You learn so much more, and that's one of the things, sometimes I show you guys things way past what you've been experienced to before, and that's why it seems like Chinese checkers. But when it comes down to it, you must know how to throw the positioning hook. And it is a lot of science to it, and the step has to come with it, and you have to bing, and you have to be right off that line. You see how that look? God, I look good doing that because it's so such a necessary evil. But those things are important to have as you increase and improve over years. You don't get those type things straight out of the gate. It just doesn't happen. So when it comes down to it, you're boxing at range. So pop, pop. When you got a good fighter, he might be long. If you get right inside that range, you throw that one, two, three, you off that line, you set, you set where you want to go. That's where that lateral footwork comes in. If he's really long, tall, you have step back, shrink him down to walk forward. And then that's what you call setting them up. You get all those things when you're working at range, mid range. We switch it up from the combinations. We start throwing those two, threes, and coming down and at mid range, you can start sticking them to the body. Poop, pop, pop, poop, one, two, two, three. Instead of taking them one, two, three up here, we go one, two, blind them there, put, touch them down to that bread basket, back over to the other side, boom, and drop and roll around, reset with the jab, get them back at the range that you fight best at. From that, next, you're gonna go inside. This is what, five, two, seven or five two three inside so you work a variation of inside drills four tiers each so this is 12 rounds total four tiers per round you'll understand how to carry a fighter in the magnitude that you will have to carry them tier one you'll be like okay this is all right but i'm tired that's why i said you cannot do these for three minutes. You will be, you might as well be in a ring with a band of Holyfield because you're going to reach levels of exhaustion. And the first thing you're going to think about is my face. I told you so. So ask more about drills and skills and conditioning programs like 12 Peaks because, like I said, the variation 
we make it look easy when you're seeing those videos. But if you go down, you see a couple of drills, maybe from three weeks ago. So today is August like 13th, 14th, something like that. It's probably like the end of July where you saw us, we were doing a lot of inside the box drills. Trust me, when it's all said and done, you can do it, but you really, really have to become versed in your conditioning because you can't play. And also eating the way you need to eat. This isn't something that you should just overlook when that being, with this being said, take this serious. And that's what we're here to do, educate you guys. Next thing, once you finish with your inside, you got to execute this next real realm by either doing five rounds to six rounds on your shadow boxing or your heavy bag. This is just what gets your body conditioned and the rhythms and the timing and the skills. The skill set intact. Why? What we see you gotta make sure you're working on your angles. You gotta make sure you're working on having that speed, the change up speed intact. So change up speed is coaches. You get the guys to work at a rhythm. Pop, 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 pop. And you change my pop. One, two, soft, or one, two, speed. One, two, pop, hide that uppercut. That's what that is. And what you're gonna find whenever you do that is the guy won't be able to take and digest your timing. It won't be able to get you. He won't be able to take you. So think about this. We all know we are trying to reach the pinnacle with our fighters in boxing. But we don't wake up every day with the visual process in front of us. That's what the art of sparring is. This was just your day one, as I kind of hoped you guys would take it serious and improve it. But whenever you don't have to think about what you have to do, you just have to do it to the best of your abilities. You maximize and you reach your full potential. Of the, the fighters get an opportunity to not have to kind of bounce around and not really understand what's coming. They also have something to read and study and get it into their heads what the agenda will be. And that, what you call that return, that's a return on your investment. Make sure that you guys are reaching out Whenever you are in a sticky situation, that's what we're here for. We're here to answer questions. That's what our objective is. And we want to keep it front and center that we work for you, coaches, because our job in, in the world of boxing is to make sure that the fighters have the best chance to become elite. Because programming sucks whenever there are guys out there and they just don't look the part. But with this, this guide is the first step, and then comes the certification. So I hope this helps you out. If this did, go to this page and do a five-star rating on us. That just allows us to know that you are really, really on board with us. And drop a comment down below, like the page, and once again, be blessed at God's speed. My name is Coach Eric Bradley, and I thank you guys for watching. And if you want to get this, go right in, click, click into that link above to learn more. Because this is Master Boxing, where you get your master's degree in boxing. Join the team and be blessed at God's speed. Peace.